nice book. You're going to like it. Natalie McLean's here. How are you? How are you? I'm very good, thank you very much. You're one of the few people who managed to educate me a little bit in the world of wine, and I appreciate that. Oh, well, whatever I can do, yeah. And here's some more education in the form of your first book. Absolutely, Isn't yeah. that nice? Red, white, and drunk all over. <laughs> Can't take it too seriously. I love it. That's a, it's a fun title, and it's a fun book, isn't it? Yeah, I, well, that's what I tried to do in my approach. Like, I tried to tell stories that would entertain people, and then along the way you learn about wine, so you almost don't realize that you're picking up so much wine information because you're meeting all these uh, creative, obsessive, mm -hmm. colorful characters in the world. Where did this uh, Where did this book take you? You were well, all over the place. I was. Yeah. I was drinking all over. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, I was in Burgundy. That's where I started. Yes. Because I wanted to start with the old world, see how wines are made, the benchmarks. Then I went across the Atlantic to California, yeah. met up with a crazy winemaker down there named Randall Graham. Then I went back to Champagne to see how bubbly is different from still wine. And then yeah. I went all the way through the world of wine to see how it's sold, marketed, matched with food. Didn't you at one point even have the boots on? You were stomping grapes in Burgundy or I did, somewhere? I did, I did. I totally wrecked my manicure and did? got in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just thought it would be more interesting to participate in the harvest rather than to say, okay, here's fermentation science, here's how wine is made. Yeah. I, I like to do rather than sit back and sniff. Yeah. yeah. Now, I know... Uh, I've been to your house and I've seen some of your wines and we talked about wine where you you work at home and do all yep. your articles and so on at home and you've written many of them about wine but you were the, per, uh, the same kind of person who enjoyed the wine and thought mm -hmm. you know what mm -hmm. this is fun took yep. a sommelier course and That's away right. you go right yes absolutely lots and lots of people are getting into it maybe you like that film sideways uh, People just want to know a little bit more about what's going on in their glass to enjoy it a little bit more. That's right. That's yeah. uh, that's how you got interested yeah. and turned it into to a, a career. I did. More and more people are treating this as as fun and mm -hmm. and interesting and a hobby that is not so serious and yes. stuffy as one might believe it was at one point. Eh? Exactly. It's really kicked down a notch in a good way. So now the sommelier is now the wine gal or the wine dude. The wine dude. The <laughs> wine dude. <laughs> I like that. A little less intimidating. Yeah. yeah. So that's how it's uh, evolved uh, recently. Yeah. And I think um, winemakers are enjoying that, are they not? I, I mean, you've so. met so many of them. I think yeah. they, they kind of look at this and go, you know what? People are having fun with it. Definitely. It's opening up the market. People are realizing that you don't have to be an expert to enjoy wine, that it, it just makes a meal more pleasurable when you sure. have a great bottle of wine, nice plate of food. It, it sure is an interesting topic that people like to talk about. They certainly do. You know, it do. generates a lot of great conversations. They do, they do. People ask me what I do, and, and it seems like a dream job. I just drink all day, but really there is a little bit of writing that goes on. Now, back in Nova Scotia. Yes. Did you ever think one day you'd be writing a book about wine? Absolutely not. <laughs> Come from a good Scottish family. That's right. Knock back the beer and whiskey. Wine was definitely not part of the meal. Right. It came to me later in life. Yeah. Along with my husband. Now, what's uh, <laughs> what's uh, been the response to the book so far? It's been great. Is um, that right? Yeah. I, uh, as you know, I have a website, and readers have been emailing in to me and, and telling me that they're they're connecting with it. It's, I'm thrilled because although I've always had that connection through the website, through my magazines and newspapers, this seems to be a way to connect more deeply with people and their passion for wine, whether it's the people who make it or the people who drink it. Mm -hmm. Through this book and your articles that are all over the place, who are you writing for now the, nowadays? Where do we find your articles? There's Ottawa Magazine, yeah. um, Chatelaine, um, the, the Citizen mm -hmm. contribute there as well yep. and um, my website has a lot of articles that's too. right that's yeah. right uh, you are becoming well known across this country as as, as a, a wine writer and a, and, a, and a person who really enjoys wine and is able to share that and that's pretty yeah. cool yeah I think that's great I love how you weave in the information into your story and like you say people are getting the information about wine without even knowing it exactly and enjoying yeah. a it's good book hidden. good for you <laughs> plans to write more oh yeah yeah More books on the way Yep, definitely. This one's in stores right now. It's called Red, White, and Drunk All Over. I mean, you got to just love the title, <laughs> right? That would make me buy it. Okay. Natalie McLean, the author and uh, uh, a local Ottawa wine connoisseur, thank you very much. Thanks, Kurt. We'll take a break and be back with more of A Channel Morning after this.